It is the day. Okay, so let's start off with that. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Elizabeth Lucas of Olavlu is selling everyone, become a life learner. Because until you keep learning, you cannot really grow your mindset. And like how we always remind you, mindset is everything. And we have two kinds of mindset. He said that your mindset is fixed or your mindset is growing, or he said that your mindset is negative, or your mindset is positive. But I have a good news for you today. You have the ability, you have the power to change your negative mindset to positive mindset, and to also change your fixed mindset to, neg to uh, fix and um, change your negative mindset to positive and fix mindset to growth mindset. And that is why YYC is here building this platform, inviting all our great mentors, speakers, and trainers and leaders to come and share their wealth of wisdom. So if you are on the platform, especially on the Facebook Live, you are all welcome. Sit tight and enjoy the masterclass for today. Before then, let me move on to introduce myself. Dr. Elizabeth Lucas is a dynamic and motivation speaker. She is based in the United Kingdom. She is the founder and director of Yes You Can International. She has been invited to several international conferences to speak and lecture. She is an intelligent teacher, author, and she is a mentor to the younger generation. Please subscribe to YYCI TV on YouTube to watch her amazing videos. You will be glad you did. This is just to let you know that there's nothing too difficult for you to do. If we can change, then everything around us will change. Without wisdom, you can't really create wealth. We are in the world of creativity. So feel free to subscribe to yyci.tv YouTube channel for more of all our inspirational nuggets of wisdom videos and our previous events on masterclasses and also conferences. And I can assure you that you will experience transformation in your relationship, in your leadership, and even in your life. So you are welcome. Welcome to Yes You Can International, a home of discovery, development, and demonstration, a home of love, relationship, and family, a place of mastering mindset for transformation, and building deeper relationship. Why well, YCI stands for time, because time is for everything, for the youth, for the youth leaders, and also young families. And time stands for transformation and training, inspiration and impartation, mentoring and motivation, and above all, empowering our youth, our young leaders and young families and also educating them. YYCI has a mission, is to engage the youth's mind positively and take positive action. And that's why we keep creating this masterclass for them to keep learning and to help themselves to focus and not to be distracted of everything that is going on in the world and to get better and better and better. And let them also know who they are they have everything within their power, within themselves, to be successful, to achieve, and then to fulfill their dreams and purposes. Once they believe in themselves, you will be assured that they will do better, even greater than we adults. And they can also influence their, their, their friends, they can influence their peers, and they can influence, influence the generation to come. And that's why we arrange masterclasses and workshops and conferences and seminars monthly. Our youth need us to guide them, lead them, mentor them, and save them from destruction, misguided, and confusion. 
Our youth need us to listen to them, to give them opportunities, platform to express themselves, their concerns, their ideas, missions, dreams, aspirations, and visions. They have so many questions in their minds and they want to, they are looking for who we answer those questions for them. We also set a platform for them to network together, both locally, nationally, and globally, and to empower them to do something great for their lives and future. And that is why we, YYCI, stand for. We have so many programs for them that they can tune in and, enjoy and help themselves. We also have some various books. We are encouraging them also to write their stories, their books, to write their articles and become a co-author or author of their own book. All these books are available at amazon.com or amazon.com.co.uk. We just launched a very wonderful book by my own husband, which is How to Change Your Mindset. That also with other books are available at Amazon. And if you want it direct from us, please email me on Elizabeth dot lucas at ymail.com or visit our website www.yesyoucaninternational.com or www.yesyoucanbyelizabeth.com. So these are the programs that we have in place. So let's go straight to our first speaker, our first mentor, our trainer great leaders in the society. But before then, let me challenge you. Be a pioneer and champion of greatness because yes, you can. So let me just introduce to you our wonderful speaker of the day. Okay. So our first speaker will be Reverend Professor Anek Fok Akpapio, and he will be sharing with us today on the place of focus and determination in leadership. Because when we're talking about leadership, he will also be relating it to relationship as well. And that is why you are all here to listen and to learn from his wealth. Now, who is our Reverend? Ambassador Reverend Professor Annie Fork Apabio will be is, is an electrical engineer, a member association of supervisory and executive engineers of London, AMSEE. -E. Professor Apabio is also a professor of geology and biblical studies. Fellow Association of Christians, Theologians, Fats, Fellow and College of Chaplaincy and Psychology, Nigeria, FCCP. Professor Apabio is also the chairman of National Executive Council Association of Christians, Theologians. He's also the provost of World Avet Bible College and Seminary, Calabar, CRS. Nigeria. He is the general overseer of Kingdom Builders Ministry. Professor Apabio is also the president and visionary of Ministerial Consultancy Network. He has a Lancet marriage counselor and teacher on martial issues. He is the head of administration of World Organization of Ambassadors African Channery, WOA. Professor Apabio is also an international and continental speaker in conferences and seminars. He's a member of Bible Research Institute, MBRI, theological scholar and book writer. He's a child of God, a minister of the gospel, who is called to teach, to preach, and take people to their God's destined destination. A privileged and accepted speaker of Yes, You Can International, and is also 
one of our patrons. So let me use this time to welcome Professor Reverend Anek Fok Akbabio. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much, my, my queen. Thank you, every of those who are going to speak in this program and all who are going to listen. I am trusting that God is going to meet us at the point of our needs. And so welcome, it will be a good time. And I want you to be a part of where we are going. And like the queen have said, if there is any question, we'll be ready to answer them because he who asks questions know better. Thank you. I am speaking today on the place of focus and determination in leadership and relationship. When we look at this word, I quickly come into the scripture in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Jesus said, whosoever put his hand in the plow, looking back, is not worthy of the kingdom of God which means there is a need that we continue so we can get to where we are to go. And look also at Jesus, rendered in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse two and three, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He was moving towards, and that means he was focused on what he came to do. And at the end, he could say on the cross, it is finished. If a leader don't come to this state of life, we realize that he may end in a way that is not okay. I look also in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. The Bible says, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. So as we go on, I, remember, I want us to know that focus and determination are the two key principles that will make a leader to succeed in leadership and also in relationship. Because there are many things that distract attention, many things that bother our mind, many things that in and talk in our brain that can distract us and make us to see them fanciful, not what it should be. So that's where we are going to go. And we are going to take the example of the case study of Gideon and jo jo uh, Jonathan to see the focus and to see what it is. I come to what study. What do we mean by the word focus? Number one, I say it is a center of activity, the center of attraction, and the center of attention where every concentration is focused on. So focus is that if I am doing a thing, if I want to be trained, I have a center of that activity. That center of activity, the thing that crowds my mind, the thing that makes me think of what to do, that thing that will make me go to a goal and have an end is called focus. If I don't have what I'm aiming at, what I'm seeing, like Jesus, the Bible said Jesus was looking at him, focusing because he was to a crown was there for him. There was a joy set before him. So he focused on that joy because at the end, the Bible said, wherefore, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name above every other name. If he was not focused, he could have missed that. Focus number two can be a directed attention a directed distinct vision or a clear image. Focus can be called a clear image or a directed attention. So if you don't have a clear image of what you are doing, you will not make it to the end because other things will be seemingly. Here in Nigeria, we always make a statement. If it's not Panadol, it is not Panadol. If it is not what you are looking at and you go and miss a little, we see we have a problem. So focus can also be seen not only as a directed attention, it can be seen as the motivating purpose. That is the one I want to use as a key de definition. The motivating purpose or principles, objective, 
that one gains to help him succeed? Do you have as a leader a motivating purpose? That is focus. That thing motivates me to talk. Some day motivate me to keep quiet. Some day motivate me to leave every other person and see what I am doing. If you come to a position of leadership and this is not there for you, you say you are not uh, focused and you will not succeed. When we talk about determination, what do we mean by determination? I said determination is a position arrived at after consideration. A position arrived at after consideration. You have determined to do something and then you focus on it and continue until you arrive at what you decided. That's uh, what we call determination. We can also say that determination is a purposeful firmness, a resisting distraction, and a decision to finish what we started. Looking at these two, or looking at this definition, we can see where we are going. Now, when we talk about the place of focus and determination, the place of having something we are running after, and the place of deciding and staying and making sure we take a firm stand on what we are, it matters much in leadership. Because as far as leadership is concerned, psychology has made us to know and other that there are a lot of things that will crowd your mind and tell you you are not succeeding. There may be some people that will not make you do what you should do. Sometimes I tell people that when I look at leadership and I look at a place for He picked the ball. It's not a goal. It's good. It's not a goal. It's a confusion. You must see also we have, we have not only the spectator, we have the referee. We have the other people who will stay in the house and say, kick. he didn't kick well. He didn't do this. He, he, they are not in the field. But you are in the field. Then we have a referee. And we know that whatever the comment or the commentator is commenting, whatever the fans are looking, the most important person in that place is the referee. When he gives the referee, he sounds the, the whistle, he says it is a goal, it is a goal. Therefore, a leader must understand that as you are leading the people, you are like in the football field. You must not mind the commentator. You must not mind the, the spectators, but you mind what the referee is going to see. That's where you determine to look at nobody, all the praise of men, to make sure you succeed. But this was a picture that happened, and we want to trace, looking at a case study of the man called Gideon. God called Gideon at a time that they were impoverishment, when Israelites were tortured. And when they could not be free, the media and I would punish them because they committed sin. A leader had to come out in the midst of confusion. How will he succeed? When others are in trouble, when others were fans, when others were hating, when others could not know, how did he succeed? I look at it and I see that there were 15 things that made Gideon succeed. And that shows the place of focus and determination. He really determined and he was focused. And these are the one, number one step. What we see there is be sure you know your sender and your task. If you are a leader and you want to lead well and succeed, be sure of your sender and be sure of your When you are not sure of your sender, when your sender may be, in this case, what you are called to do, the objective of your leadership, the goal that you want to bring, 
What like in transformational program here, what, which area are we transforming people? I said last week that there is a transactional leader and there is a transformational leader. Like that, you see, you know you are sender. Gideon, when he was to do the work, an angel appeared to him and told him, you are a mighty man of valor. You can fight the battle. He said, look here, if I am what you say, show me a proof. A leader must not just pick the work and begin to do it when he does not understand what am I saying to do? What am I going to achieve? Who is backing me up? Who gives me the instruction? Who gives me the input? In? Who will encourage me? Whom am I accountable to? Some leaders, because they don't know whom they're accountable to, they do anything they can. But we must know that the number one thing about focus and determination is that you must know your sender and your pop task. To Gideon, it was that you are to redeem these people. To us in leadership and this program, we are to transform our nation. There are a lot of people. I called somebody the other day and asked him, which one is very important today? Is it transformation or reformation? We see we go reforming, 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 and life are not transformed. So our task is to transform and not to reform. So know your task as a leader, as a young person, even in relationship. Know the task. What am I going to achieve in my marriage? What am I going to achieve in my relationship with somebody else? What am I going to achieve in this place of work? That will help to make things go. So when you know that, you see that the magnitude of the task ahead of you determines your seriousness. When you understand clearly the magnitude of the work, you will do it well. I learned a lesson from Jesus. When he healed the blind man in Mark chapter 8, in that verse 24, he told the blind man, what do you see? The blind man said, I see men like trees walking. And Jesus said, come, come, come back. He laid his hand upon him and said, what do you see? He said, I can see men clearly. If you are not clear about leadership, you will not succeed. If you are not clear and determined to succeed, you will not make it. So let's have the number one vision. What am I going to do? Who is backing me up? What is going to be the last thing? When you do this, you see you will succeed in leadership. Step two that we learn from Gideon is that he understood what he was called to do. He understood what he was called to do. He told the angel, if I'm a mighty man of valor, wait, show me this sign. I want to see this happen. I want to see the other one happen. And he decided to do it because he understood. Many people who are leaders don't understand what leadership comes for. We know sometimes we say leaders are born or leaders are made. Either a leader is born or a leader is made. Made through training as we are training now, born with a capacity of leadership. But I come to see almost everybody at their level is a leader. Leader in the home, leader in the house, leader in discussion, leader anywhere. But this one, we are looking at the one that you take people to somewhere, a task that must be fulfilled. So you must understand what you are talking about. You must understand uh, what you are called to do. Am I called to bless these people? Look at Moses. Moses was called to lead the people into the land of Canaan. What are we called to do? After making this transformation in the life of our people, where do we leave them? I thank God when we we're discussing before we start, the queen told us there are some uh, youth everywhere that when we go to those programs, we can bring them together and make them know where they are going. One thing that the leaders sometimes do, we train people, we leave them, and they go out without supervision. We don't look at what they are doing. We don't know what they are doing. Only we know they have been trained. Like in the Bible school, I'm the head of the Bible school here. We have trained a lot of people. Some of them have become mighty, but some of them, they go nowhere. Because we did not do something. We do what supposed to do, or the church has sent them to come and study. 
They did not even understand what they should do. So understand what you are doing. Understand first who has called you, your task. Understand the, what you are to do and where you are going to. Number three, have what it takes to deliver and lead the people. You know, we see today incompetent people leading. We see today incompetent uh, uh, people who are not competent, you know, being at the altar preaching the gospel and saying they are ministers when they are not. Someone was asking me a question. I told the person, a pastor or a minister is bigger than I didn't know. If you didn't know, you should be trained. So in this program, as we are here, let us know that the number three thing becoming, making, talking about focus and determination is we must have what it takes. If you need training, be trained. If it needs humility, be humble. If it needs reading, read. If it needs anything for us to uh, present an academic property, let's present the academic property. If there is a need for research, we go into research. If there is a need for psychological view of things, we need to do that. I learned also from Jesus in John chapter 2. The Bible said Jesus did not commit himself to anyone because he knew man. And he did not want anybody to tell him anything about man because he knew what was in man. That psychological perspective, whatever it takes for you to become a leader who will lead the people well, whether in relationship, in marriage, in work, then have what it takes. Jehu told uh, this person told uh, Moses, the father-in-law of Moses, called Moses. He said, you can't do this work alone. Look around in that Exodus 18. Look around. Those who are competent, he said, able men, not only able men, men of truth, Men that eschew evil and men that you can use. There are qualities in a leader that is important. Have what it takes to be a leader. To the people talk about charismatic, they forget about the charisma. The real life that somebody should live. Number one thing about what you should have is a lifestyle. A thing that you know, an integrity. That when somebody hears what you say, I know that man. He lived by what he said. When you don't have what it takes to represent God and heaven, you disappoint the leadership. You make leadership to be nothing. Number two, the accompanying knowledge of the work. A leader is not led, but a leader leads. So if you don't know where you are leading the people to, a leader must have direction. A leader must have a people. A leader must be able to tell the people, this is what should be done. Have what it takes. That is why if you are in this program, whether young or old, and you've not been trained on leadership to have what it takes, look for it. It is important because we see people, now look at what we call quack doctors or quack this or quack that. Because they don't have what it takes. They can kill more than save a life. But when you have what it takes, it matters much. I love the statement Job told his brother or his friends. In Job chapter 13, verse 2, he said, What you know, I know I'm not inferior to you. That's a leader who had what it took in order to become what he wants to be. What you know, I know I'm not inferior to you, which means he was balanced, academically balanced physically balanced, leadership-wise balanced, and so nobody can intimidate him. Today we have leaders that even the followers can intimidate and they run away. So when you have what it tells and you focus on what it tells and you determine to succeed, you will determine or you will do it. That's Judges chapter 6, verse 11 to 14. Number four, have the divine backing before being involved. You see, in this thing, I just want to share with us what we're talking with the queen before we started. He said, when we back anything with prayers, it works. So if you don't have divine backing, you know, when, uh, when this Gideon was asking the angel a question, he said, Lord, if you don't go with me, I will not go. My dear leaders, who leads you? Who goes with you? Is it human sense? Is it human ideology? Is it the way people do things? You must have what you are going to. Who backs you up? 
if God backs you up, nobody can actually stop you from succeeding. Focus on who backs you up. Know what is happening. I tell ministers, and I share with all of us, let God tell you what is going to keep you, that when it is tough and rough, and you want to run away, you can remember a word that was spoken to you. That's a backup. A word of God that can back you up, the God himself that can back you up, the spirit of God that can back you up. Let's know what backs us up. When you have a divine backing, you can move on. That is how Judges chapter 6, verse 15 to 24. He had a backing. And because God backing up is succeeding, this one is not a governmental backup because they can fail. This is a divine issue in leadership. Number five, I say here, deal with family altars. It is important in leadership. You know, when Gideon was about to go and then deliver Israel life from the Midianite, God said, go to your family altar, break the whole altar, make sure you destroy them and set an altar for the Lord. And altar can be seen as setting a standard for God to be. Deal with your family altar. Many leaders could have succeeded, but the symptom of the family that they come from becomes a problem. Therefore, if we must actually succeed in leadership, focus on anything that will stop you not to succeed the way you succeed. I love Colossians chapter 2. The Bible says, blotted out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. He took them out of the way. He nailed them to his cross. Therefore, there must be a checking out of anything that will do. Ask yourself a question. Why did God tell Gideon, go and break the altar from the house? And he decided to go in the night, scatter the altar, break the altar of Baal. And when the people woke up in the morning, they went and then told the father of, uh, of uh, Gideon, he said, Your child, he said, if Baal is God, let him come and fight. When you break the altars, you will see that you have the freedom to flow with God and God alone. Leadership is not just, I go with my power. Leadership can be back up when the divine process is being achieved and encouraged. Number six, I said, remember it is not the number that matter, but the chosen ones. Let us know as leaders, not the crowd of people that follow you that are going to make you succeed. If you focus on the crowd, you fail. When these people were told to come and fight, 33,000 followed. It is not the number that matter. It is how we can invest life in few that can spread. Jesus had disciples, 500 disciples, 70 disciples, but he chose 12. Invested his life in them. And when he invested his life in them, when he left, you can hear in us. He said, these ones have turned the world upside down. Therefore, know that it is not the number, but the chosen. When you know those who have been chosen, that's why prayer is also essential. That when you see people coming and want to leave, they say they bring the name, they might come to be with you because they have they want to come under your coverage. They might come to you because they want you to come and help them. But look at those whom God has chosen. God told uh, Gideon, He said, All these people are not here. Take them to trace, take them to the water. The ones I will choose out of the 33,000, only 300 people were accepted. My fellow leaders, not all the people in their church will stand with you. There's something I always remember about uh, Samuel, sorry, about Saul. In that first uh, Samuel chapter 10, the Bible says when Saul became a king, a lot of people were saying, so will not rain, so will not rain, so will not rain. But the Bible says a band of men who had the Lord at touch. Those were the people that follow Saul, and Saul succeeded. And when he came back, those who were talking nonsense said, who said you should not rain? let us kill him? Please know the people who have the Lord at touch. If you are a pastor here, you can have a crowd of 5,000 members in the church. And only two or three or five, maybe the one who served the Lord has touched for you, to suspose you, to help you, to sustain you. My queen, also know this, that 
Almost all of us stay here. There are some whom the Lord has told they have for you and they for you. Those who had us not been taught, they will always come here and talk and talk and then go. So if we know those whom the Lord has taught, they choose them, it will work well. So let's decide to do that. By prayers, God can reveal to you those who are to do the work. And by the way they respond, because when somebody is seeing himself as a chosen one, he will put all the effort. We can detect them. Don't rely on everybody because some of them among the crowd are the mixed multitude who followed Moses from the land of Egypt. On the way, they were looking for cucumber when it's supposed not to have been so. There are a lot of cucumber seekers among the people we are leading today. But I know God will deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number seven, I said here, lead by example. Focus on leading by example. Determined to lead by example. Gideon told them, what you see me do, do that. If I blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet. If I break the picture, break the picture. Whatever I do, do it. Today we see that a lot of introduction of issues are coming in leadership. You have a focus. You determine to succeed. But somebody come will bring another idea and will tell you, no, he will not work like this. Let him work like this. You know, the other church is really like this. The other leader is really like this. Remember here, as far as Atom is concerned, that our prince, prince, of our hand is not the same as other people. I tell everybody, and I will share with you now, the Bible says, covet earnestly the best gift. It didn't say copy the best gift. Copy the best man. Copy the best preacher. Copy the best this. The way they do. We can extract from what they say and use it to be what we ought to be and mold it in our mold so that we can do what is expected to be done. So make sure that you lead by example. What you see me do, do it, and the people succeeded. When I break the picture, break all the picture. Let's make our people to follow our step, and that could be done. The next thing is, number eight, stand still by faith and see the battle done. Stand still by faith. Leadership needs a trust. Because the way people are disappointing the leaders today, the way you trust somebody and hand over the work into their hand, the next thing he turn over. He become the Absalom who want to take over from the father. He become the Ahitophel because Ahitophel felt he had been giving good announcement, giving good instruction. Therefore, he can lead. Please make sure you stand by faith and see the battle going on. Let's believe that God will help us to solve it. If it is marital relationship, if it is a work relationship, if it is any relationship or leadership, let's believe that the one who started with you is going to bring it to an end. I love God in the scripture. He said, I use the hand of Zerubbabel to start it, and the hand of Zerubbabel will finish. So God is assuring you that there will be success. When it seems to be tears in your eye, you see people rejecting you. Don't worry. Have faith. That who started with you, he said, he, he who had begun a good work in you shall bring it to the end. Number nine, I say here, avoid distraction and go forward. Never mind any distractors. Like as I was saying, in the football field, commentators will come in. He put the goal, he take the goal, he doesn't go. Oh, oh, oh no, it was not so. Oh, no, it was not so. Don't mind the spectators. Don't mind those who are com commenting. Mind the God who is the last referee. So be sure that you avoid every distraction. Whatever you set your mind to do, do it. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He made what he went. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name. When we are not distracted by anything, it will work well. Today we have politicians who can distract us. Today we have money that can distract us. Today we have fame and ego that we say, I, I did it, I, we boast around that can distract us. Tell yourself, everything must go. Let me focus and let me do what I've determined to do. You see, at the end, the people that run away from you shall come to you. I've seen something in leadership. People will celebrate you when you succeed. But when you fail, they will laugh at you and they make you nothing. Number 10. Use the people that know the way. 
be sure you use the people that know the way. Do you remember Gideon? That when Gideon was, went and fought, people came and accused him and talked to him. He sought for somebody say, said, you know this way, take us there. You can sample those who understand. In leadership, we have been saying in this program, all the speakers have been saying one thing. You don't have the monopoly of knowledge. Even if you know what you know, we say like Paul, we know in parts. We prophesy in parts. We live in parts. Therefore, when I bring my part, uh, the queen bring her part, uh, all, the, all the professors here bring their part, we see we will succeed. So please make sure you use the people that know the way. Anybody that understands what he can do, let us tell him, take the lead. And we, he's not leading us. He will tell us the way to go. I remember when Moses finished and they came out from Egypt and the in-law followed and he told the in-law, come with us because you know they were, you'll be our guide. He said, no, I want to go back. Why was he looking for that? Because he that knows the way, knows the pothole. He knows the mistake. He that has gone before us have known where there can be problem and he can bring solution. Let us know, we leaders, find another leader, at least by God's grace, that may have knowledge either than you or like you, so that you can share iron sharpened iron. So when we know these who have known the way, they will be able to lead and help us to go. Then we say here, number 11, avoid self applause avoid self applause and motivated pride for a leader to succeed you must avoid self applause and motivated pride what do i mean by that because i succeed when i come here i say yes you know what i do i talk to thousands of people you know you know eh, eh, it's not so let's avoid them it is humility and the fear of the Lord that will bring promotion and upliftment at last. So let's avoid those pride and it will help us. Then the next thing is give God all the glory. Anything that we are and we do, it is God. It's nothing. Yes, we can with God. Yes, we will fail without God. Yes, we can with the Holy Spirit. Yes, we will fail without the Holy Spirit. Let us count all on God and say this is what is done. Good enough for our uh, backup profile, big ones. Uh, the queen will call and call all of them instead of summarizing just to make sure we know the person. But apart from that, remember, those things are brought down. But the inward view is the one that matters. So let's fear the Lord. Then when we finish that of Josh or uh, uh, Gideon, we can look at uh, Josh or oh, sorry, this person, I was talking Jonathan, to act to focus and determination. We say, when you look at the aspect of Jonathan, the first thing Jonathan did was, he was dependable and selfless, or he had a selfless, what do I mean here? So he have dependable and selfless core leaders. If you must succeed as a leader and you want to focus and make sure you achieve your determined goal, you must have dependable and selfless leaders. There are some people that will save without applause. There are some people that will save without even looking for money. Look for those dependable leaders whom you can hand over the work to and you say, come and see what they are doing whom you can hand over the job to, and then you are satisfied that even if you are not there, the work is going on. We need dependable leaders today. To be very frank, like as I said last week, for my 49 years in leadership, as a, as a minister and as a leader, I have come to see that a lot of people want their side of story. You give them a little chance, what they do is to blow their name, blow their thoughts, blow everything about them. And then they use that to condemn you, who is the leader. Find these dependable people whom you can hand over to and know that it is done. Not those whom you hand over to and they turn everything. That when we see about Aaron, a few moments that Aaron was given a chance, he made a God for the people. He was a brother, but he was not actually spiritually dependable because the the yardstick of dependability is a spiritual relationship with God. If somebody is spiritually related with God, 
it will guide his action and his head, and it will have the mind of God. Jonathan had dependable and the selfless leaders who followed him. He told the, uh, the armor bearer, he said, follow me, climb the top of this hill. It was rough, and they were going on. At the end, they came back to bring the glory. The next thing is, be careful of your followed pressure. Be careful as a leader of your followers pressure. Followers pressure. Do you remember that um, Saul could have been a successful man, but the followers were the problem. Samuel have told him, I'm coming in the next seven days. So I will come to sacrifice, don't do anything. But when Samuel left, and because Samuel came late, by this time, the people are pressurizing. The people are going to kill us. Wake up, wake up, wake up. A leader must not act by pressure. If you act by pressure, you may not meet the focus. You may not meet what you were determining to do. Pressure makes us uh, stressed up. Pressure makes us take an urgent decision that doesn't make it. So be careful of the following pressure. Don't do this. Don't, let us go. And when he sacrificed and finished, Samuel appeared. And when Samuel asked him, why have you done? He said, the people told me, the people told me, the people told me, please, as a leader, never move by the pressure of people. Never move by the pressure of your impulse. Do it, they will take over. Do it, they will do this. No, go back to God. Do what David did. He said, Lord, should I push you? Will I overtake? Will I take everything? And God said, go. Another time when something happened, in the same chapter, he went to God and said, should I go? God said, don't go until when I move. Let us be free from pressure. One of the problems of leadership is pressure by the followers, pressure by situation, pressure by ourselves. So when you are able to be free from them, you can now take your personal decision. You hear some of our leaders in our nations, they'll say, I take the blame. Why do they take the blame? Because they did it on their own volition. They were not doing it because people pressurize them to do it. I take the blame. So when you do anything, you can take the blame when you were not pressurized to do it. The next thing that will help us to really have the place of determination and focus is know what you don't have and how to get it. Not all of us have the material of leadership in our hands. Know what you don't have and look for it. You don't have the patient enough, lead the patient. You don't have the right person to do that, do it. You, you, you don't have the accountant to take care of what you are doing, look for an accountant. You are a preacher. You may not be all the field. We are not all things to all men. It is only God who is all things to all men. But when you know what you don't have and you look for it, it will be better. That's where we talk about uh, improving ourselves, transforming our life making sure we have what it takes to become. After all, thank God for the scripture. As many as receive him, he give them power to become. There is a power to become what we have not. So when you do that, we come to take the lead first and let the people follow. When you know where you are going, when you know what you are doing, you take the lead first and people will follow you. That's leaders. A leader don't stay at the back and let people go in front. It's now a lead. Take the step first. Do what I say. It says, look at me and do what I do. That is very rare today. Some preachers and some leaders will say, no, I'm a big man. Do this thing. Don't look at me. I'm now old. I'm now, uh -uh. that's not the thing. Because God has called you, take the lead first and let people follow you. When that is done, I say here, know your strategy. If you are a leader and you want to succeed with focus and determination, know your strategy. How are you going to take the kingdom? How are you going to take the Canaan? How are you going to take the Egypt? What are you going to do to get what you want? Know your strategy. Put your strategy on ground. Most of the time, your strategy should be decided with you and God and competent people that can help you. They give you the strategy, you know, if I do this, it doesn't succeed, get this. A leader should know and have what we call plan B. Plan B in leadership. If you try this, it doesn't succeed, 
take plan B. If you go to plan B, it doesn't work, take plan C. Be, be, be ahead of problem. Be ahead of time. So that when you do that, if the plan B doesn't work, plan C will work. Or you can retreat back to plan A. This is what we're to do. So know your strategy. A, a leader is a strategist who will know what he's doing and where he's going. When you see all this thing being done, you realize that you can really succeed as a leader when you are focused on these things. And I say here, when you succeed, others are bound to celebrate you. Leadership should aim with success. I learned a lesson from um, Adonijah, Solomon, and David. People followed Adonijah in order to crown him king. They poured the oil upon his head. They blew the trumpet there. But when Nathan went and told the king, this is not what you say. And the people, Nathan made a statement. He said, everybody is looking for your voice. And when David said, do this, call this and call this, let them pour oil on Solomon. And when they pour oil, they blow the trumpet. There is somebody that should blow the trumpet. And then when you know where you are, and when you know, uh, when you succeed, as you succeed, you see, you know the strategy, you know to join, the people not celebrate you anyhow, there is an all. When they celebrated Solomon, all the people that joined Absalom they, or Adonijah, they ran away. So please, as a leader, don't move by sentiment. You have a purpose, you have a goal. Be sure of where who the oil comes on the head. Be sure whom you give the mantle to. Elisha was not selfish to withdraw the unction upon Gehazi because he did not have the right spirit. He decided to go with the, the, the anointing rather than having it into a person who is going to destroy and look for money and money alone. But when Elisha took over from Elijah, he knew Elijah had something and he grabbed, his spirit grabbed that of Elisha or Elijah and he moved together. But Gehazi did not have the heart of Elisha as Elisha had to live it. So for what you are to do, my beloved ones, let us remember when you succeed, others will follow you. If you fail, they will make you a jesting star. I pray that with this thing that we are talking and we are focused and we are determined, and we give determination and focus a purpose, you see, you will succeed as a leader, unbeatable, unchangeable, and undisturbed. God bless you. Thank you. Because of my time, I always keep to time. I want to be sure that uh, we know that this is what we can do. Next day, we will hear more. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Great, 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 great. Uh, blessings that you have given us today and we've really i've personally been jotted so many things down and i really like that area that you really emphasize on because i know sometimes we don't touch on that but now that you've uh, raised it up again i think it's better for us to also think about that and that is be careful of your followers pressure but sometimes what we do as a leader, sometimes we can be cut off with other people's uh, pressure. It's like probably you've planned yourself, you know what you want to do. And then when they start giving you one thing or the other, you need to reassess it before you now, you know, being cut off with that. And I like the place that you said, never move by the pressure. Oh, yes. That's what uh, the young ones we call peer pressure. Now, sometimes we want to do things because others are doing it. But if you want to be distinguished and be a transformational leader, then you have to be the leader. You have to be a pioneer. You have to be a champion of what you are doing for people also to follow. So it's, it's good. You can learn from others, but be the master of your game. I also like the place where you said be free from pressure. Pressure can be from situation, can be even ourselves and others. And know what you don't have and how to get it. I think that is very important as well. And I think that is why masterclass is very valuable because you don't know it all. And not, no knowledge is waste. So when you keep attending seminars, 
masterclass, workshops, conferences, and you keep reading, I keep researching, and you keep watching videos, then you will gain more knowledge. And when you gain more knowledge, you are adding value to yourself and you will be able to add value to others. Then there is a the power of to become. Oh yes, we all need to be reminding ourselves that we have greatness in us, that we have the ability to change things around, that we have the ability to change our mindset from negative to positive, that we have the ability to change and transform our situation, our lives, and our relationship. Because with God, all things are possible, and there is nothing too difficult for God to do. So if you just believe it and have faith in yourself and have faith in God, then you can step up and you can do what you need to do. And also, I like the place where you say, leader must know their strategy because all leaders are strategists. So yes, you need to know what you, are, what you want to do, what you want to achieve, where you want to go, what you want to accept, what results you want to take. So you need to plan it right from the beginning and the goals towards it. So, and that is the goals that your followers, your employ employers, I mean, your employees, even your trainees and your mentees will follow. And also we need to rise above the problem. That is very, very important. We cannot deny that there is no problem. We cannot deny that there is no challenges. But if you yourself determine in yourself that I will rise above it because we have the ability in us to, have, to rise above it and also to press forward. Very important. And when you succeed, others will follow you. But when you fail, people will be just of you. That is very important. And that's one of the reasons why you need to take it and be determined and focused that you will succeed in respect of every obstacles and adversity and circumstances beyond control that surrounds you, you will still succeed. Why? Because you want people to learn from you, because you want to add value to others, because you want to be the pioneer of what you are doing, because you want to be a transformational leader, because you want to be the leader that imparts into other people's life. So on this note, I want to say thank you so much, Professor. Um, Reverend Professor Apabio for really starting off the session with us today. And I have a question from the audience. The first question is, what can you do to motivate a team when you are a leader? Okay. Uh, to motivate the team? Yes, when you are a leader. Okay, actually, we must know what they are looking at. And when you know what they are looking at, what you can do, leadership is sacrifice. One thing, that's one thing I have seen. Leadership is sacrifice. Somebody might be serious in the work because you've given him a little money, because you've given her a little comfort, a little encouragement. So if we are to motivate our people, let's know what are they looking for. There's what we call need. It's what we call want. Is it a want or is it a need? If we know it's a need, we can look for a way in order to solve that need. Mm -hmm. But if it's a want, we can advise. There are some people that could save God very well, but because they have a need that breaks them down, they will not be able to do it. So when a leader look at that and see that, what he can do is find a way to solve that problem. Uh, look at what happened to, to David. When they cut the wife and everybody away, they came and saw a young boy who was left on the road for three days. He did not eat. He was almost about to die. And David said, who are you? He said, I'm this and that. He gave the number one. He gave the man food to eat. And the man was strengthened. It was when he was strengthened, then he said, where is these people? They carried them there. The person feeble one in our midst that want to be helped might be like that boy who will make us know where the secret of the work is. So whatever they need, if it's prayer, if it is counsel, if it is money, if it's encouragement, let's do. But if we realize that there are three kids, just one is a want, not a need, then we can tell the person wait first. There are some emergency, even in the hospital, there are some emergency and there are something that will take time. Whatever it takes, you can sacrifice to get what you want. 
Because when you succeed, the person that follow you to succeed will enjoy and you enjoy together. So there should be a taking action at that time in order to settle that matter. Wow, thank you so much, sir. I know you always, um, I know that you today you were discussing about focus and determination in leadership, but knowing who you are and knowing how many years you've been married and building relationship and being a counselor, I will also throw these questions to you from the okay. audience. What role do relationships play in learning? in learning learning what okay. role do relationships play in learning okay you know when we come into marriage or even in normal you, you can't relate well if you don't know you must i always love that statement of uh, job job say what you know i know i'm not inferior to you so when we come into relationship and learning now you know like we Sometimes I tell people one plus one is not two, or it's not one is two. Some people will laugh and say, no, the Bible says one, and they shall become one flesh. No, when, if the husband, let's talk about marriage now. If the husband don't understand the other side of the wife, some men want to force their wife to be like them. Mm -mm. Some women want to force their husband to be like them. And it's not true, because this man have his own intellect, has his background, has certain viewpoint that is not like the woman. So what can be done is we learn from one another. That's a psychological aspect of looking at what psychology talks about, the issue of the sanguine, the melancholy, the phlegmatic, and uh, the other one called, uh, what do we call, the choleric. There are some people whose lifestyle can be tough and rough, but they are good, and that's how they were made. It is for the, for the husband now to learn what can we do about this life. And the person himself also or herself to learn how can I fit up in the life of people. So relationship has a lot to do with learning. Learning the way of life, learning the pattern of what the other person does. As we are coming now, we are not from the same background. We don't believe the same thing. But as we learn, we can now adjust. So the place of the learning in relationship is it brings stabilization. Number two, it brings real understanding of one another. There are many times husband and wife quarrel for nothing, which if they have learned to know the differences between the man and the difference between the woman, they can still go together and they too become one flesh, mm. not one body, because they are still too hate. They are still too intelligent. They are still too background. Somebody can come from another culture to marry somebody in another culture. What you need to do is learning. But mm. you remember, learning is a process that some people don't want. They want to ask. They don't want to learn. So if we talk about relationship, whether in work or anywhere, learn the person you are working with. Master what he loves. Do what he doesn't love. Flow in the area he loves. Avoid the area he doesn't love. Like I tell people, one plus one can become one. When the husband knows, this is what my wife loves, this is what I don't love. Therefore, if we are to be together, I adjust a little, she adjusts a little, and we can flow together. So learning plays the real role in leadership. Either you read the life of the person, the action of the person, the conduct of the person, the environment, the way of spending money, or you are idiosyncrasy according to big grammar, what we are and what we are not. So that when you have learned this, you cannot make a better person that can work well. Sometimes mm. in marriage, we say, you don't understand your husband or your wife in the first two years because there are some inner things in their life that they don't reveal. They don't bring it out. But the more you learn and continue to learn, study their life, study their life, you can see that when those bad sides comes, then you can clear. There is the side we call the open field. That's how we call the dark side. That side, open one is, you know it, he knows it. But there are some types in our life that nobody knows except ourselves. Except mm -hmm. you learn the structure, you learn the feature, you learn the activity will not work. So learning plays a very good role in relationship and leadership. Because as we learn, you see what you hate before, 
you can begin to love it because you have come to understand. Learning brings understanding and discretion. That's what I should say there. Wow, powerful, powerful. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you for, so much for the answer. So we are learning every day, just as Prof said, that learning has to do with a relationship. It has to be learning because if you don't learn, you cannot adjust. And like we are growing every day, we also our relationship needs to grow every day. And that is why we are transforming by feeding our mindset with the right information. I also like the place where I will say that to me, learning is, I mean, relationship is a platform of learning or you can call it a place of learning. So when you are willing to learn, then that is the first step of you building a relationship. Because if you are not willing to learn, it's better not to even involve at all in any relationship. Learning also is a place of demonstrating love. Love is greatest. And for you to want to do, you can practice. Yes, you can love yourself. But at the same time, you also need to love others. And the only way you can love others is when you build relationship with others. Because that is the way you can demonstrate your love and your relationship. So I want to say thank you so much for this. There's still one more questions to go. I'm sure you've 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 touched it, but for the say for the benefit of the my great leader that has asked that question, I would like you to just top on it. And that is how do you build good relationship? Okay. Thank God for that question. Well, if you want to build good relationship, number one you must not be selective because when you are selective you you decide to to adapt adaptability comes in here if you are to build a relationship you must actually have an open mind mm. so that as you come close to people and then you see what they do you can learn from what they are doing and not only that one, when you are building, you want to build relationship. The issue is now you know what you are looking for in life. Because we build relationship based on what we want, our area of interest, our area of concern. Don't build relationship on people that have diverse thought about what you are doing. They will just stop your attention. So when you know yourself, you know what you want in life, then you can now look for people that can do that to you. I use the principles of mathematics in explaining this, that there is plus, there is minus, there is subtraction, and there is division. Or multiplication is there. There are some people you relate with them, they subtract even the best thing that you had in your life. And you come to see that that relationship has even destroyed you. There are some people that you go close to them, they divide you, they scatter you, they get you confused in what you do. But there are some people you can relate with them, they add values to what you do, and sometimes they multiply what is in you. Look for people that can add value to what you have already, and then go on. But in all aspects of relationship, know what you want. Know where you are going. Know what you want as your integrity so that when you build a relationship, you build a relationship based on where you are. And when you do that, the next thing is being ready, like as I said before, to be open-minded. There are certain things you can do a trial by error to see whether it will work or whether it will not work. But be wise. In building relationship, be wise. Because many flies that comes to uh, a wound, according to some addicts, they do not come in order to, to blow the thing and tell it well. They are coming to eat and then destroy that part of the body. Many people that we see, they are promising. Sometimes they are just empty vessel. They have nothing to offer. They can make the loudest noise. They can say the thing. They can speak in TVs and programs and everything, but go right inside, they have nothing to offer. Let's use our eyes. Uh, in Nigeria, here we say, shine your eye. Let's shine our eye. I know exactly who have what I need. 
who can actually be part of me, then we can relate with that person. By the learning and going on, we see it will help us. But when you go to a person you never knew before, and you just hear by introduction and by announcement, a person will say, he said, I'm the one, I do this, I do that. You may fail at the end of the whole story. So be wise, be determined. And be serious about who you are. Know where you are heading to. Nobody should divert your attention to somewhere because of personal interest. You know very well there are some people who come to relate with you just to destroy you. Look at uh, uh, this woman uh, with Samson. Out of the three women that Samson came through, this, this woman was the one that did Delilah. She wanted, he came and told Samson, where does your power lie so that I can destroy you? Samson could have been wise because by the question, he knew that she was coming for a purpose. And he said, he play, play, play. At the end, he said, this is my hair. If you touch this, be careful of exposing yourself to people you don't understand. Be careful of releasing yourself to people that may take you and hand you over to an enemy. We must know that's where comes in the insight and the spirit of God that will lead you to know this person I'm relating with, is he going to help me or not helping me? Even in the church today, remember when Nehemiah wanted to be here, they even sent a prophet to go and tell Nehemiah, let us go and pray, and they wanted to kill. So when we are wise, we shine our eye, we know where we are going, we know the kind of people that come around us, we will be able to relate freely. And don't relate with fear. Have boldness, because the Bible says, fear has torment. Be bold enough. The boldness in you will even influence somebody who wanted to do you bad. And always look at people that they can have, they may do good or they may do bad. Let me share one experience about me. I have come to the level in life that I believe that you cannot do anything bad, you cannot do anything good. So that the day you don't do anything good, I know that's what I know you can do. And the day you can do everything good, I say, ah, I expected that. We quarrel with people and have annoyance and unforgiveness because we were expecting this person to do it this way and they come and they did not do it. If we come to a balance that this person can do or cannot do, we see that it can help the world to go the way it should go. That is what I could uh, say about that relationship. Let's understand, but the most important, know where you are going, know what you are doing, know what you are looking for and know the people around you. That will help you better. Wow, 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 yeah. What, what a way to finish up your speech today. We really, <laughs> really appreciate you, sir, from the beginning to this time. And we really say thank you for joining us today and sharing your wealth of wisdom, your knowledge, you. and even thank your you. experience. I believe because like I can see people, they, they are typing, they said, you speak very interesting, which is very good. And even though the questions you are answering, it's, it's, I mean, they are really learning. They said the answers was amazing, the way you are answering it. And um, it's just to, it's a great job. So people are enjoying your speech, your, your teaching today. And I want yeah. to say on behalf of Yes You Can International, both the matrons and the patrons and all the leaders and the family, we want to say thank you, sir, for yeah. releasing yourself to us today and share your valuable thoughts. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you so much.